Many Muslims have said that, okay, we agree, the Bible has not been canceled, but I have no need to read it because the Quran is the last revealed book and therefore it is going to supersede all previous holy books. This is the uh, sentiment of many uh, Muslims who say this but haven't thought through the consequences of such an attitude and statement. Because the Quran again teaches the opposite of that attitude. In fact, in Surat al-Baqarah, Ayah 136, it says, Say, we believe in this revelation given to us and the one given to Ibrahim, or Ismail, or Isaac, and Jacob, and the tribes, and that given to Moses and Jesus, and to all of the prophets. And listen to this, we make no difference between one and another of them. They're all put on the same equal footing. So therefore to say, oh, the Quran is to be preferred, while understandable, is really something that goes against the teaching of this verse. Also, we are told in Surat al-Baqarah, uh, Ayah 285, uh, that we need to confess, to say that we believe not only in God, but also in his books that is given in the plural. To believe something, you must be aware of what it is, you must understand what it says, therefore to say I will not read the previous revelations is to say I'm not interested in what is in the word of Allah or his guidance or his mercy or his particular will for my life. If we are to set aside the Bible and the holy books that comprise the Bible, for it is comprised of many books which Allah gave unto mankind, then why would we have a warning in the Quran, in Surah Ghafir, Ayah 70 to 72, that those who do such a thing, who reject the previous books of Allah, are in danger of hellfire. This warning would not make sense if Indeed, uh, God's process of revelation meant that whatever he gave before is to be thrown out. It is thought by many people that the scriptures that were given had a regional or, if you wish, even an ethnic purpose. They were meant just for a certain people, that they were meant for a certain nation or region. I grew up believing that Jesus was sent only for the people of Israel. But as I began to study the Quran and the Injil, I realized that this was really an imaginary concept that fit neither books. Here is what we read in Surat Al-Imran, verses 3 and 4. And he sent down the law of Moses and the gospel of Jesus before this as a guide to mankind. As a guide to mankind. And the word that's used is anas. So this is not just the Jews or the Christians. Otherwise, it would not have said to mankind. So therefore, to assume that because supposedly the previous books were meant for a particular group that does not concern Muslims today is patently false. I would like also to call to your attention that it says in that particular verse, نَزَلَ عَلَيْكَ الْكِتَابَ بِالْحَكِّ مُسَدِّكًا لِمَا بَيْنَ يَدَائِهِ وَنَزَلَ الْتَوْرَاتَ وَالْإِنْجِيلَ It is a musaddik or musaddikan to confirm. Musaddikan confirming or a confirmer. It came to confirm that which had come previously. Well, think about it for a moment. What is there to confirm if something is to be canceled out and thrown away? When it says musaddikan, musaddik, think for a moment what happens in a court of law. When one witness comes and says a word that confirms a fact or a statement made by a previous individual, he gives validity. This witness gives validity, establishes the truthfulness of the previous speaker. 
Oh. We know that we say that we are mu'minin, that we are believers. When I say ana ba'amman, I have faith, I trust. When I say ana b'saddik, it also means that I am reassured, I have a uh, belief in the validity of something. That's the word that is used in the Quran, speaking of the Torah, speaking of the Injil, on the same footing with the Quran. And it says that the Quran confirms these. Therefore, we must not assume that these books have been done away.